Here with us now is the driver of the number 10 Smithfield Waffle House Ford, Eric Almarola. Eric, we asked Joey earlier, you got an hour with this new package. What's it like? Different. I don't know what other answers you've gotten, but different. Um, you know, it's obviously uh, a lot different than the norm, what we've been used to. And going that, uh, you know, 40 mile an hour slower than we're used to is is uh, is a little different. But then, you know, the, the ability to race really closely around other cars at a mile and a half racetrack is also very different. So I think... You know, from just that one hour of practice, I think there's still a lot to be, um, you know, seen. I, I think uh, everybody was pretty cautious right there, trying to, a lot of us, you know, have one car for this race that we've put effort into. And so, you know, I think everybody's trying to make sure they make it to the to the all-star race tonight with the, the car they showed up with. So there was, there was trying to, trying to guess at what you have in pa in a pack, but also, you know, being mindful that, practice didn't pay a million dollars any strategy to race your way in tonight and will that extra track time from the open help if you make the all service yeah i mean we've obviously uh we start on the pole so that's a really good start um you know because we were we're, we're the highest car and owner points so uh that's a that's a good thing to, that we've started off the year so well and and that uh while we haven't won a race yet we are we're the highest car and points uh, that's in the open. So we'll start on pole and, and then hopefully uh, get a good start and get out front. And I hope to make it very boring for everybody and, and lead all 20 of those first laps of the first stage. I mean, that's my goal is to uh, to go out there and lead the first 20 laps and win stage one so we can come into the garage and park our car and, and work on it and get it ready for the all-star race tonight. All right, we're going to open up with questions. We're going to go to Lee and then we're going to go to Jacob. I have two questions. First of all, I want to know about what... Is she allowed to ask two questions? Did you... Definitely, okay. yep. Okay. Anyway, um, I want to first ask you about the throttle response. If you can kind of describe to us what that was like compared to your normal car. And number two, do you feel confident you can bring home the bacon tonight? <laughs> well, I'm going to start with question number two. We... Our goal is to bring home the bacon every night, and for us, whether we win or lose, we bring home the bacon. <laughs> so uh, that's the beauty of having Smithfield as a sponsor. But uh, to your first question about the throttle response, you know, the, the restrictor plates on the engine reduce the horsepower drastically. I mean, we, we already, um, you know, at mile and a half races prior to this rules package with our, with our current rules package, have a tapered spacer plate to reduce some of the horsepower so now they've gone even a step further and, and put restrictor plates on so it does drastically reduce the horsepower um almost so much to the amount that you can you know you launch off pit road and and we'll see on restarts but it appears that on restarts you'll just push the gas down and, and go and you don't have to really worry about wheel spin at least on a racetrack like this so i, I going forward um We'll just have to wait and see. I think there's so many unknowns that it's hard to say, but just in that little bit of practice that we've gotten, um, it, it is quite a bit less uh, responsive when you go to wide open throttle. Jacob Seelman, Speed Sport. Unlike Lee, I only have one question here, but uh, <laughs> Joey was just in here and described this as kind of a hybrid of what we might see between mile and a half racing and the draft at Daytona and Talladega. What are you seeing as some of the similarities and differences between this draft and the draft that fans are used to? Well, first, you know, the, the track is so much smaller. Um, so the, the radius of the corners is a lot tighter than what you have at Daytona and Talladega. So those racetracks we go to and you run wide open pretty easily. Um, and, and you don't really bog your car down a lot with a lot of steering wheel input because the corners are so wide and so sweeping. Uh, this track is not like Daytona and Talladega. The radius of the corners is a, is a lot tighter. Um, so it is a lot more challenging as you get further back in the pack from what I've seen in practice to be able to run wide open because the corners are sharper and you have less downforce and less air on the car when you get further in the back. 
So it's it's more of a challenge to be able to run wide open because of the radius of the corners. So I would agree that um, while yes, you know we we are drafting and we're closer together and we do kind of uh, suck up like you see at Daytona and Talladega, uh, the straightaways are much smaller. So there's less uh, oppor- or there's less length of time to get that big run. Uh, it has to happen quick, and then when you get to the corner. Um, you've you've got to make sure your car handles good enough to be able to run wide open. Kenny Bruce with KennyBruce.net. Eric, when when you're out there doing practice with this package, do you think, well, this is different, or do you can you tell, okay, this part's different because I've got that huge spoiler sticking up in the back, or it's different when I'm around other people because I can tell. The arrow ducks are making a difference. Can can you tell those things, or is it just an overall feeling of this is different from what we're used to? No, it's it's just an overall feeling. And so far, I think the biggest thing that that I've noticed, and in, in talking to my teammates and stuff, I think the biggest thing we notice right away is just the reduction in power. You know, the the cars obviously have more downforce and more drag, and and you notice that for sure. But the the reduction in power is is is. Um, you know, very evident in the, in the first thing that I feel like I noticed and, and talking to some of the other guys that they noticed. So, but other than that, I mean, when you go out there to practice, you, you think about that for about one lap. And then after that, you're just trying to optimize your car. I mean, that's the, that's the beauty of what we have as a sport and, and the competitive nature is that it doesn't matter what rules package NASCAR throws at us, and you know we're we're all going to try and figure out how to optimize it so that we can beat everybody else. And it's just called you know that's just called compet you know competition. And you know for for us, I mean that's that's been our focus is to take the rules package we got, optimize it, try and bring the fastest race car we can. And I feel like the guys at Stuart Haas Racing have done a really good job with that, like they've done with everything else this year. Um, and all of our cars are really fast, whether we're by ourselves or, or in the pack. Yes, <clears throat> Lewis Frank of Reuters. Uh, tonight, you know, you, you have two races likely. Uh, back issues shouldn't be an issue, but coming up next week, 600 miles. Do you do anything in the next week different than you're doing in between the weeks now? No. Um, leading into the 600, I, I'll, I'll be very conscious of, of – what I do for exercises and, and really a lot of stretching and mobility work leading into the 600 because that is the longest race of the year. And, um, you know, we'll be in the race car for, you know, upwards of four, four and a half hours. Um, so I, I'll, I'll definitely have to be conscious of, you know, stretching and, and making sure that I keep, you know, my spine uh, mobilized and, and, you know, not get stiff before the race starts, you know, and, and, and in the past, uh, through all the rehab and, 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 you know, physical therapy and stuff that I've done, I've got a pretty good idea of, of what that looks like. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Eric, what surprised you on what you could or couldn't do around cars out there today? Uh, I, think, I think the biggest thing that surprised me was that the, the runs weren't bigger. Um, you know, I thought that when we got in a, in a pack and, or even just, you know, two cars, I felt like the, the idea behind the package was going to be for the, the trailing car to be able to get a big draft and get up to the lead car and be able to slingshot, if you will. Um, and I was surprised by, by that. It, it, it was a, it's a little bit more sophisticated than that and the runs are a little slower um than i than i anticipated uh so i'm not sure what that is like i said i don't know if it's because the racetrack and because the radius of the corners are tighter the straightaways are shorter um or if it's actually the package but i thought that the the runs um i was anticipating bigger runs and and more more ability to do something with the run Well, from what I've seen so far in practice, I think you definitely want if you want if you want to win, you have to be 
in the top three spots, I'm going to say. I, I think track position will play a part just like we've seen in speedway racing uh, over the last few years. You know, used to you would see guys be able to drive from 10th, 15th and, and drive up through the field. But now um, everybody's optimized the package so much and, and the cars are getting so close in competition that it's a lot harder to pass even at speedway racing. So you see, you know, a green-white checkered at Daytona and Talladega, the winner's usually going to come from the first two rows. Uh, I think you'll see the same thing here, in my opinion, from what I've seen so far. It just it seems like track position will be important. And, you know, it's, it's hard it's hard to get these huge runs from any further back because the air just gets dirtier and dirtier back there. Bob Parker, ESPN. Any idea how many cars you would need behind you to make a run? So let's say if you're second or third and you want to pull another line, how many people will need to go with you? I, I don't know. I watched I, – I ran the pack some, and then I watched on TV um, or, or on the closed-circuit TV in the garage area, and it looked like – it looked like two or three cars could get lined up and and get a run on the leader, but it didn't look like, you know, once they got kind of side by side, it didn't look like one lane was was more advantageous than the other. So, I I don't know. I I don't think that that hour of practice right there was was tell telling enough to to be able to to answer that question, Bob. James Jackson, the Racing Experts dot com, Eric. Can you walk us through your journey of, you know, what happened last year, Richard Petty Motorsports, to signing with Stuart Haas this year and all the success you've had? What part of the journey? It was a long one. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think when you look at it, I mean, just as a whole, Stuart Haas Racing as an organization is is doing incredible this year. Uh, you look at Harvick with, with all the wins and Boyer and, you know, Kurt and I consistently running in the top 10. Kurt's running the top five more often than I am. But for me, um, you know, kind of going from, from where I came from and to now, uh, I talked about it in Kansas. I, and, you know, I showed up to the racetrack every week for the last few years and always went into it with a with a positive outlook. But deep down inside, never knew what to expect. You know, I didn't know if we were going to show up that week and have a 25th place car or if we were going to show up that week and have a 10th place car. Um, and, and after a while, that kind of that kind of wears on you, especially when you show up more often than not with a 20th place car. This year, every single time we go to the racetrack, like when we get on the airplane to leave on a Thursday – I feel like we have a shot and we have all the tools and all the resources to go and win and that it's up to Johnny Klossmeyer, my crew chief and, and me and my engineers and the guys on my team. Like w we see it internally at our shop that the ability to win is there every single week. It doesn't matter what kind of racetrack it is, whether it's a super speedway, um, you know, an intermediate track, a short track, um, uh, you know, a concrete track like Bristol or Dover, like, we are competitive every single week, and that, as a competitor, is so much fun. I mean, that's what you live for. That's that's why you do what you do is to go out and be competitive. I mean, if I if I played baseball growing up and lost every single game that I played, I probably wouldn't have played baseball very much because it's not fun. Um, and, and the same for racing. I, I the reason I loved racing so much was because when I was a kid, at the end of the night, more often than not, I got a trophy. And that makes it fun. And so, you know, just continue to pursue that passion. Well, then you make it to the top and it's hard. It's really, really hard because the competition level is so high um, that more often than not, you lose. Even on a good year for, you know, Jimmy Johnson and, and Jeff Gordon. And you look back at all those years that those guys have been successful and um, and won championships. You look at Martin Truex last year. He won a lot of races, but he lost way more than he won. And, and so you, you just have to identify you know what success looks like for you and for the last several years um you know we, i feel like i got stagnant in the beginning it was it was fun and i was just excited to be there because i was cup racing and then as time wears on you know 2014 we won daytona uh made it into the playoffs and that was exciting and then 2015 was probably our best year we didn't win a race and we just barely missed the playoffs by i think 11 points but we were competitive, and, and that was fun. 
and then the next two years just seemed to get stagnant or tail off and and so the fun meter kind of got pegged and and it, it was it was not as exciting and not as fun and so this this has honestly just been a, a rejuvenation for me and for my career to to be able to show up to the racetrack every week and feel like I'm going to be competitive and, and have that confidence and know that we're going to run top 10 as long as we don't screw up and that if we do everything right, we're going to have a shot to win. Any more questions? You get the million. Is the after party going to start at Waffle House? <laughs> yes. After party at Waffle House. Guaranteed. I'll buy. All right. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> and that'll cost. $2.67.